Welcome to the Global Partnership, which is an exciting new venture where we are combining new pedagogies with deep learning. We are going to co-create through this project in a focused way, in an applied way, in a way that we're all participating and all benefiting from it. As I've been thinking about educational change recently, the dynamic of change seems to be in three phases. One is there's new directional vision, let's call it. It's not a blueprint, but it's a, it draws you into a direction. There's a letting go that needs to happen, which is creating ideas and innovating and trying them out. And then there's a reining in, uh, which is what are we learning? Is it having an impact? How can we do better? So that's the cycle I see. What makes this venture especially exciting is the dynamic of push and pull that's going on right now. The push factors for students are schooling is boring. The data are very clear as they go up the grade levels that they're increasingly bored in school. The, the dropout rate means there's unemployment. The unemployment rates are very high in some countries. Whether you're in school or out of school, a lot of students are unengaged and will be unengaged from a learning point of view for their whole lives. So that's the push factor for students. Then there's the push factor for teachers. It's hard to teach under current conditions unless things change, as we will do in this project. And teachers are alienated for some macro reasons as well, that is policies that are trying to improve teaching through intrusive teacher appraisal rather than development. So here we have this push duo for students and teachers. Then you go to the pull factors, two things. One is that the digital world is increasingly alluring. Not all of it's good, but it does draw everybody in. So there's huge opportunities of information and access to knowledge. And then pedagogy is finally getting better. Pedagogy that's more engaging, that can take advantage of the technology. So if you get pedagogy and technology integrated, you really can have a fantastic breakthrough. So point number one is push and pull favors action. And this project, the Global Education Project, is an action-oriented development. The new pedagogies, by definition, involve a new learning partnership between and among students and teachers. So among students, among teachers as well, it's between them. That partnership is beginning, we're beginning to see it in practice. That is, it's, uh, it's, it's not the students going off on their own without the teacher and exploring the digital world. It's not the teacher controlling the knowledge even through technology. It's much more open-ended for exploration of learning, for construction of knowledge. So that there, the good thing about this is it's happening uh, in a lot of different places. So this project is designed to capture what's already happening and then to stimulate it at the same time by developing these ideas further. So the pedagogies require a radical different learning relationship in the context of technology. And this relates in turn to the learning outcomes, which we could call deep learning outcomes, but they are the critical thinking, the communication, creativity, uh, collaboration, but also what we might call the well-being outcomes of character education, resilience, hard work, uh, integrity, uh, good, and good uh, team players, and uh, also global citizenship, which is the appreciation of diversity, whether it's in your local community or around the world. So this is a great integration of the learning outcomes because it's so powerful, so comprehensive, and the new pedagogy will power these learning outcomes. That's the relationship we see, new pedagogies for deep learning. Teachers' uh, role will be very different uh, pedagogically. Uh, there has been this discussion of, uh, that we used to say the well, there's no longer the sage on the stage, the teacher dominating, and that's true. Then people start to talk about the guide on the side, which we think is equally problematic because it implies the teacher is passive. And John Hattie's uh, clusters are where he, he uh, took his effect sizes and clustered a group of pra teaching practices that he called uh, teacher as facilitator and then another one teacher as activator. They show very clearly the effect size, the teacher as mere facilitator, if I can put it that way, has a quite low impact on student engagement and student learning. And that in, even when you have technology in there, if the teacher is a mere facilitator, 
uh, it means they're using technology superficially or poorly pedagogically. Teacher as activator is very different. It's the co-design of the work. It's getting at st uh, students' interest. It's having the group generate good ideas. And it's, there are some examples of this now, and this is what makes it more tangible for us. But there are also, it's so new that many things are happening uh, just daily. So this project is designed to capture those, stimulate them, and, uh, and it's not just the teacher's role we have to think of, obviously. It's the uh, student's role, how, that, how it's very different. They have much more agency, as, as, as it's called, but also much more of a relationship with teachers or whoever the teachers are. Sometimes they're fellow students. For students, what's going to be different is, for one thing, they're going to go, as we've seen in some of our uh, videos, the filming in the schools, they're going to go from being kind of passive to being actively engaged and actively engaged in their own learning uh, with, with uh, identifying learning goals and success criteria, working with other students, very different now, uh, working with them not only uh, to learn how to collaborate and be team members, but also teaching each other, being, being a teacher for peers. And, uh, and then it's all different back into the teacher because of that relationship in the, in the whole class. And the other big change is that the learning day is no longer nine to three or whatever the hours happen to be in your school, uh, that the learning day has become 24 seven. So we have said the solution has to be irresistibly engaging for students and teachers, has to be, have ease of access of uh, information, uh, that uh, that information must be technologically ubiquitous 24 seven. And that steep to real life problem solving is another of the criteria, the nature of what they're learning. So they're learning, they'll be learning more life related things during, the, uh, during their uh, uh, schooling. The schooling day will be not uh, confined to certain hours. Uh, and the projects will be really powerful. There'll be a lot more group work and a lot more work in depth. They'll be engaged and they'll have some lifelong learning skills that, that they take with them. So this is a revolution in learning. And that is the part that uh, we can see it, but we have to delve into it and define it further and assess its impact. On the question of how to assess uh, the, what is happening and what the learning outcomes are. So there are two big issues. One is the current assessment systems in most uh, jurisdictions are wrong. That, they, that is, they, they don't measure the deeper learning. They measure uh, too much uh, just content knowledge. And so there has to be a shift at the policy level, which we actually see happening in quite a few ju jurisdictions. So you have to uh, re re remove or reduce the blocks that are there now, the obstacles in the current assessment system. And then the new ones that are coming up, the indicators will be, I think, of two kinds. One is during the nature of teaching, uh, those indicators will be how engaged are students with each other? How excited are they about the learning? And so you'll see a very different learning process that you can measure, you can capture. And then you'll see also, and, and we can measure uh, collaborative problem solving. We can measure depth of communication skills. We can measure character education. So those are all things that as you operationalize the measurement, you get a lot clearer and there'll be a very close two-way relationship between the nature of learning and the outcomes and that what students then will get out of this they'll be able to take with them for their entire lives. As we head into this initiative for the next three years, with at least a thousand schools, with 10 different countries, what we're going to do, it's an action research reality. We're going to be able to pursue these ideas in our local communities. We're going to be able to learn from others, others within our cluster, across clusters, and the knowledge base that's happening even outside our project, this is a dynamic learning proposition that's going to be exciting, it's going to benefit all those who participate, and the results are going to really benefit the wider world of learning.